here soon. Hello, thank you everyone again. We are getting underway with our virtual press conference featuring Michigan elected officials, along with clean vehicle advocates, as well as an OEM for electric vehicles. They've all come together today to speak in support of significant investment in electric vehicles. Thank you again to our sponsor, Moms Clean Air Force for today's event. For our agenda, we'll have two to three minutes of formal remarks for each of our speakers who will be visible and audible by, via their video. At the end of the formal remarks, we'll have a brief Q&A session where members of the media can raise their hand or use the chat function and indicate if they have a question. I now want to introduce Elizabeth Hauptman, the Michigan State Coordinator for Moms Clean Air Force. Elizabeth, the microphone is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our virtual event to advocate for electric school buses. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. My name is Elizabeth Haltman and I'm the Michigan organizer for Moms Clean Air Force. We are a community of over a million parents, including 30,000 here in Michigan, united against air pollution and the urgent crisis of climate change to protect our children's health. Electric school buses clean up the air for our kids and communities. They also reduce carbon pollution, heating up the climate and threatening our future. We are gathered today on this call to Congress to pass bold climate legislation with meaningful investments in electrifying school bus, transit, and trucking fleets to protect the health and future of my son and his peers. With that, I'd like to introduce our lineup of speakers. We have State Representatives, Julie Rexy, House District 69, Commissioner Jarrell, Slaughter, District 3, Ingham County, Howard Mack Dashney, Senior Advisor, Michigan Association for Pupil Transportation, Lisa Ludland, Director, Channel Partner Sales for Terra Bus, and Kathleen Sloninger, Executive Director of Asthma Allergy Foundation of America. As mentioned earlier, my name is Elizabeth Hauptman, the Michigan Field Consultant with Moms Clean Air Force. My son has asthma and his disease is made worse by air pollution. Because of him and the over 166,000 children in Michigan who suffer from asthma, we need to quickly transition away from buses that run on dirty diesel engines spewing pollution that causes cancer, triggers asthma attacks and makes climate change worse. We need to protect all of our children from the nation's largest source of carbon pollution, tailpipe pollution. Children who ride diesel school buses are exposed to carcinogenic, asthma-causing pollution. The air quality inside a school bus can be several times worse than outside. Children are more susceptible to the health harms from this pollution, given their still developing respiratory systems and faster breathing rates. Children are also more impacted by air pollution for many reasons. They breathe more rapidly than adults, spend more time outdoors, and they are physically more active than adults, thus exposing their still developing lungs to more air pollution. Kids are also smaller, living closer to the ground than the rest of us, standing just about tailpipe high, where concentrations of pollution is coming directly at them. From cars, trucks, and buses, my son had an asthma attack from being close to the exhaust from diesel polluting bus. As a mother who has seen far too often the panic and fear in her son's face as his chest tightens and he gasps to breathe, we must do more to protect him and the children who suffer from this chronic illness. Furthermore, 
Childhood asthma rates are significantly higher in children of color. Latino children are twice as likely to die from asthma and black children are 10 times more likely to die from asthma than white non-Hispanic kids. These statistics make it abundantly clear that we need to shift from zero emission vehicles, especially buses, is an environmental and social justice issue. Our children deserve justice in every breath. That is why I'm asking as a constituent, as a mother with a child with asthma, that Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin to move quickly to support a climate bill that supports EV infrastructure and electric buses. Moms and your tiniest constituents are depending on your bold actions in Congress. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to State Representative Julie Brexy. so much for inviting me here today. It's great to be with everybody virtually this morning. Um, I represent Michigan's 69th House District, which includes the city of East Lansing, Michigan State University, Meridian Township, Williamstown Township, and Lack Township. Here in our region, about 80% of voters support investments to rebuild and modernize our infrastructure. And about 60% of voters support investments in electro, electric vehicles and charging stations to reduce our carbon footprint and help address climate change. Our residents know that we need to act now on climate change and that doing so can pave the way for better infrastructure in our state. We also know our state relies on its manufacturing industry, which accounts for more than 19% of our state's total output. By supporting President Biden's proposed investments in, in cleaner cars, trucks, and buses, we can continue to be leaders in manufacturing and bring manufacturing jobs back to the US. As of 2019, there were 125,365 Michiganders working in clean en energy. That's pretty impressive numbers. If we expand this effort, we can save the country millions in fuel costs. To get there though, we need bold federal investments in clean vehicles and clean transportation infrastructure. President Biden's initial infrastructure proposal included ambitious investments to spur clean energy growth, to limit pollution from power plants, reduce carbon pollution from the fossil fuel industry and expand the electric vehicle market through tax credits and investments in EV infrastructure. It also included a groundbreaking proposal to deliver 40% of the benefits of those investments to the communities who have traditionally suffered the most from dangerous pollution. We need all these provisions and more to meet President Biden's goal of a 50 to 52% reduction in carbon pollution from 2005 levels by 2030. Investing in clean vehicles, expanding the market for electric school and transit buses and building the infrastructure needed to support them will reduce dangerous pollution, create millions of manufacturing and construction jobs and lead to economic opportunity for all. The electric school buses currently operating in Lansing and Oxford have already improved air quality and saved the school district's money on fuel costs. It's urgent for Congress to pass a bill that makes the bold, ambitious investments needed to tackle the climate crisis and accelerate our transition to clean energy. Representative Slotkin has long been a champion of finding innovative solutions to address climate change, along with our aging infrastructure. Congress must, must join her by continuing to support clean energy growth and investments in the electric vehicles market in order to improve public health and create better economic opportunities for all Michiganders. Um, following um, my remarks, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, one of my um, friends and fellow elected officials here in Ingham County, uh, County Commissioner Darrell Slaughter. Thank you, Representative Brixey, and uh, good morning, everyone. Again, uh, Darrell Slaughter, Ingham County Commissioner, representing District 3, um, representing uh, South Lansing. 
I'm really happy to be part of this event. This is an issue that is near and dear to my heart, um, addressing our climate uh, crisis. And really happy to see that we finally have some real leadership at the federal level to actually take on climate change, while also being able to address uh, some really long-standing infrastructure needs that um, that have gone too long without being um, addressed. And so from a, from a very local elected uh, official position, I am really encouraged that we're going to finally not only be able to talk about infrastructure, but actually start to look at how can we decarbonize our transportation system. Um, as, as others have said, uh, Black and brown folks uh, tend to be more of the, the uh, victims of the effects from uh, harmful diesel and other uh, emissions that come from um, our transportation system. We have an opportunity to uh, transition our uh, transportation system into a clean, emission-free uh, emission, free emission uh, uh, vehicle system so that folks can, can get to where they need to be to be able to, to go to their jobs, go to school, without having to worry about, about being um, led uh, susceptible to these harmful emissions that um, by all types of studies that have shown that um, can create asthma and other long-term effects and, and folks um, there. Also really excited about some of the also the other potential uh, infrastructure fix. We have a huge challenge as we're trying to meet our, our carbon reduction goals in terms of our, our, our electrical grid. You know, as far as, 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 as much as we can do to decarbonize our, our grid um, to make sure that we're using clean um, resources, um, generation, the better we all are. Again, black and brown folks are more susceptible uh, and, and tend to be located in those generation uh, generating facilities. These are opportunities that we cannot let go by. We have, uh, by 2030, we have to make a tremendous pr uh, progress in meeting our carbon reduction goal. And I'm really happy that um, the administration is setting that goal of between 50 to 52% carbon reduction by 2030. That is really bold and that is ambitious in terms of meeting that, that goal. I really urge, uh, and, and someone who's been a really great friend and a great uh, a partner on this issue, Representative Slogan, to continue to support um, uh, the potential infrastructure package and the, the uh, parts that will really work to decarbonize our, our entire economy and our transportation sector, uh, sector our electrical sector, uh, our building and housing stock electrification there. I'm really excited there. And then also really excited that there'll be a, a tent, uh, intentional focus on making sure that those communities who have traditionally been left out of a lot of these opportunities, uh, opportunities to, to have work, uh, to work on these infrastructure rebuild, black and brown communities will have um, a significant uh, portion and these dollars will go towards them. So just overwhelmingly really excited um, to be supporting um, this and Again, from a local level, I'm talking to folks on uh, about different issues. You know, our health department, we, we obviously deal with folks who are struggling with asthma and other health effects. We know that while th these will have long term effects on the overall quality of, of people's lives, so people can live their best, best lives, we know that folks uh, do better when they're, they're healthy and it can make uh, uh, the best decision. So just really happy to be part of today's uh, discussion. And um, yeah, so we'll pass it on, I believe, uh, to Lisa. I believe we have Howard next on the speaker lineup. Sorry, Howard. Thank you and good morning. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about what goes on every single day when we transport kids to and from school. Uh, I represent the Michigan Association for Pupil Transportation. We have approximately 350 to 400 members, but we represent the interest of 800 school bus fleets in the state of Michigan. And in a normal school year, hopefully that will happen beginning in September, 600 public school districts deploy about 12,500 school buses and 99% of those school buses are diesel, gasoline, or propane. Less than 1% are zero emission vehicles. We transport about 586,000 children every day. That's 1.2 million rides a day. In a 180 day school year, we transport 20 times the population of the state of Michigan. 
And every day we transport those children 870,000 miles per day. For trivia buffs, that's per day, three trips to and from the moon every single day. Our regular ed buses average about 12,000 miles a year, which is 67 miles a day. We'll get to that a little bit when we talk about range anxiety. Our regular ed buses travel 20,000 miles a year, and they're averaging 90 miles a day. According to the uh, Michigan State Police, 50% of those 12,000 buses are 10 years old or older, which make them the most expensive to operate, the most polluting, and the ones lacking our new safety technology. 20 to 90 percent of all of the students in the state of Michigan in every school district are eligible for free and reduced lunch, which means that's a strong indicator of economic health and community distress throughout the state of Michigan. And beginning in the year 2017, the Michigan Association for Trans Pupil Transportation, prompted and supported by uh, an environmental lawyer, Susan Mudd from the Environmental Law and Policy Center, embarked on an electric school bus project, pilot project. And what we're doing is beginning to show people what 21st century pupil transportation should look like. Our association over two years, up until 2019, established the grant, partnered with seven school districts, three utilities, two bus manufacturers, two charging station, two charging station manufacturers, and a plethora of infrastructure uh, organizations to help put things together. During 11, excuse me, four of those school districts deployed 11 buses starting in January of 2020. And they, although the pandemic uh, disrupted our operation, those four school districts transported thousands of children, thousands of miles, delivered meals and educational equipment. This gave us a hint of what zero emission electric school buses were going to, going to do for us. Uh, bus project range, all of our buses range between 150, 125 and 150 miles. Cold weather operation. Well, Gaylord Community Schools is one of the seven and they operated in January and February on almost a daily temperature somewhere between minus five degrees below zero and 20 degrees above zero. And they only lost 3% of their battery charge, which is almost insignificant. Uh, our fuel, electrons, our fuel cost us approximately one third the cost of fossil fuels. And because Electric vehicles have one tenth the moving parts of fuel vehicles. We're looking at approximately one fifth the annual cost of maintenance. So our total cost of operation, probably if we can keep the projects going and demonstrating, probably in five years, we will be able to say total cost of operation will equal or be less than what it's costing to put a diesel or a fossil fuel bus on the road. Lastly, with all of this data, pupil transportation is the most ubiquitous mass transportation operation in the state of Michigan and in the country. If you're going to take a look at how do we educate the public, it is straight through public schools. Public schools in Michigan, I indicated to you, we do 1.2 million rides, half a million kids across the country. We transport 25 million children a day. That's 50 million rides. 
There is no other transportation, ground, air, water, that even remotely comes close to the level of transportation, the number of miles, the number of children, and I'm gonna repeat that, the number of children that ride on our vehicles. We need to keep this electric school bus project, we need to keep our momentum going, we need the federal and state government to help us with these demonstration projects. This is going to reduce cost, add value, and improve health of children. And because of the ubiquitousness of our transportation, we are educating communities, parents, and all of our seven districts, curriculum coordinators, and superintendents are looking at our school buses as mobile education laboratories. K through 12, we will use our electric buses to educate students who will live in the 21st century and will continue to uh, move forward with a zero carbon environment. So with that, I'm going to uh, introduce a colleague, but a friend who's been involved with us since the beginning, Lisa Lillen from, uh, she's the director of channel sales from Coterra Bus. Lisa, take it away. Thank you very much, Mac. It's a pleasure to be on this call today. Thank you, Mac, for sharing the compelling facts on school transportation. And thank you to Moms Clean Air Force and to the legislators of Michigan for giving us this opportunity to shine the light on electric school buses and their health and economic benefits to children. As a native Michigander, now working at our battery lab in San Francisco, I'm especially proud that some of our first electric school bus deployments were in Michigan. Proterra has been manufacturing and deploying electric transit buses for over 10 years with 20 million service miles on our vehicles. We have factories in San Francisco, LA, and Greenville, South Carolina. Many of our engineers come from Michigan with great experience that they've gotten from the automobile industry here in Michigan from companies such as General Motors. Very recently, Blue Water Area Transit in Port Huron received Proterra Transit buses and Detroit will be receiving them later this year. We are really excited that there's proven battery electric vehicle technology is now going into school buses through our partnership with Thomas Belt Buses, which is a subsidiary of Daimler Trucks North America. In 2019, DTE Energy led the way in a partnership with Ann Arbor and Roseville Public Schools and Hoaxer Transportation to procure electric school buses through the VW funding that was administered by Eagle. Eagle was an amazing partner working with many schools throughout Michigan and working closely with MAC and helping have this come through. I was very proud that Michigan is one of the first and only states in the country that had their VW funding. And that's the funding um, from the uh, diesel, diesel gate um, that there was money set aside for clean transportation. And Michigan was one of the first states that had it solely devoted to electric school buses. So uh, to Debbie Schwartz and the team at Eagle, we're very grateful um, for that, for giving school buses a chance. We uh, launched a five-year pilot project beginning in 2020 to bring clean, clean transportation to the children in Michigan riding on these buses in Ann Arbor and Roseville and to the communities they travel through. School buses are an excellent use case for electric vehicles since they have fixed daily routes and low annual mileage. School buses are only in use around 20% of the time, so we're excited to do some demonstration projects in Michigan with DTE Energy to see how these large battery assets can be used as backup power, help decarbonize the grid through vehicle to grid and vehicle to building. We're really excited to be working closely with Ann Arbor and Roseville schools, Thomas Built Buses, Hoaxer Transportation and DT Energy to showcase in Michigan how clean transportation and in the near future, vehicle 
vehicle to grid will be benefits to the community. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be here. Um, I'm phoning in from Charlevoix, Charlevoix the Beautiful, where I grew up. So I'm very happy to be in Michigan today and to be speaking with all of you. Thank you. Now I wanna pass it over to Kathleen. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm the director of the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, the Michigan chapter, but I'm also a registered nurse and certified asthma educator. So today I hope I'm going to highlight the health impacts of this issue. Now, as you already heard, the transportation sector is the largest source of pollution in the US. And asthma is the most chronic condition among children. And it's the leading reason why they end up in the hospital or miss school. And there's growing evidence that people who live near sources of air pollution like roads have higher rates of asthma and are hospitalized much more frequently due to exposure to pollutants. Additionally, researchers have found that non-white children are more likely to encounter airborne toxins near their schools. And air pollution has other dangerous impacts on children and all of us really, but it affects the neural development leading to lower cognitive outcomes like poor academic performance and lower grade point averages. It negatively affects mental and motor development and reduces attention span. Exposure to pollutants increases childhood cancers. And exposure to high level of air pollution may actually increase the risk for chronic disease later in life. We know air pollution increases wheezing and coughing and shortness of breath. It makes asthma worse. It makes COPD symptoms worse. It increases the rate of lung cancer, the susceptibility to infections and premature health but it can also cause heart attacks and strokes and metabolic disorders like diabetes and fertility problems. It causes preterm births and low birth weight and increased infant mortality. When I did asthma home visits for Detroit residents, I taught families all about their household triggers and how to better manage their asthma. But we had little control over the air quality outside their home and poor air quality was a key reason for a lot of their uncontrolled asthma. And interestingly, a recent study looked at long-term exposure to pollution on COVID-19 death rates. Just a small increase in your exposure is associated with an 11% increase in COVID-19 death rates. And globally, that rate increases to 15% and up to 58% in the most polluted places. More than four in 10 Americans live in places with unhealthy levels of pollution. And unfortunately, people of color are three times more likely to breathe the most polluted air. Low wealth and black and indigenous and people of color communities experience a disproportionate harm from dirty vehicle pollution, leading to skewed rates of asthma and other illnesses. Because pollution from dirty vehicles disproportionately harms low wealth communities and communities of color, Investments in clean vehicles and buses will not only transform the transportation sector and clean the air, but it's a strong step toward addressing environmental justice. We urge Representative Slotkin to continue supporting clean energy growth and investments in electric vehicles in order to create an economic opportunity for all Michiganders and improve public health. Always health first in all policies. So thank you for your attention today to this important issue. And I'll turn it back over to Elizabeth Hopman with Moms Clean Air Force. Elizabeth. Thank well, you, Kathleen. Yes, Elizabeth, you. definitely no, appreciate that. I just wanted that. to say thank you again, and I will turn it back to Kevin. Thank you, Kathleen. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thanks to all of our speakers. That's the end of our formal remarks portion of our event. We now have a few minutes for question and answer. Members of the media, if you have a question, you can use the raise your hand function to indicate you have a question, or you can also type your question into the chat box. And I can work through that. Um, I'm able to unmute your line if you'd like to ask a question directly to an individual or to the group of panelists. So please, if we have some time, don't be shy. You can use the raise your hand function or the chat function to ask a question.
Okay, I do not see any questions. I know Howard and Elizabeth were excited to get some questions, but we can wrap things up here. Um, I wanna thank all of our speakers for their time uh, and their passion around this issue of calling for strong, bold investment in electric vehicles. I should remind everybody that we will have a press release that will be issued within about an hour at the end of this event. That press release will have a link to the live stream video that was on Moms Clean Air Force. I also wanna thank Moms Clean Air Force for hosting this event, all the work they did and all the work they have done on this issue uh, over the past several months. I wanna thank all of our speakers for taking time out of their busy schedule to advocate for this important issue. For members of the media, if you have any follow-up questions, please let Ben Stacer or Jake Blum know. They were happy to follow up and connect you with any of our speakers as we go. Once again, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.